Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, one of my all-time favorite rackets, but one of the all-time favorite rackets that broke really easily, too. Stay tuned. All right, guys, thank you to my coffee sponsor of the day, um, Arthur Wong from Hong Kong. Arthur writes, hey, man, love your videos, dude. I got back playing tennis after 20 year absence and started playing again a bit more than a year ago. I basically stopped after college is what he said. I got my gear and all my tennis related stuff all via your video recommendations. I noticed your changed swing these days and have more topspin and it's and seems to me you lost some weight too. Want to talk about that? Sure. Uh, actually, I didn't really lose any weight. Um, I think it's the shorts I wear. Maybe they're a little tighter. Um, I, as some of you may or may not know, uh, depending on when I play will depend on, on how I look. If I play in the morning or the afternoon, I haven't eaten yet. So I look a little skinnier. Uh, and if I wear a darker color, obviously I look a little skinnier. I've always been right around 200 pounds. I know it doesn't look like it, huh? I, most people say, oh, you are weigh about 150. I'm like, no, my head weighs 50 pounds already. If you want to support my dark roast piping hot coffee habit, Network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. Thank you all in advance. Okay, so one of my favorite rackets of all time, Yamaha Secret 4. You guys probably always hear me talking about this racket. Definitely a heavy, heavy racket. Now, I've smashed many of these rackets, most of which wasn't my fault. This is actually a very stiff yet brittle racket. I mean, I've smashed probably six, seven, eight of these just by hitting the frame on an overhead or a serve or a forehand. Um, literally, if you hit the frame as hard as you can, it will snap somewhere on this racket. Like... The most common one is I hit 12 o'clock square on with the ball and it snaps over here. But I think that's what makes it stiff. Now, as you guys, if you guys of a certain age, you know what Yamaha is. If you're not at least in your 30s or maybe 40 right now, you probably never heard of Yamaha except maybe at the second hand store because they pulled out of America in the mid 90s. So yeah, it's been a while. Uh, maybe in your 40s, you, you probably wouldn't know about this, but they made great rackets. Uh, they were made in Singapore. So that was another racket manufacturer that no longer exists now. And they only made rackets for themselves, just like Yonex did. And their symbol was this. A bunch of uh, arrows lines so this particular one uh, my buddy Todd uh, said hey I know you're a Yamaha fan here you go test it out and bring and, and bring back some old memories and I'm like dude sweet it's actually in really good condition for being like 25 years old 30 years old um, it's an L5 which is 5 8 And it's the original grip. See, the original leather grip is on here. I guess the most most famous person to use this racket is Yannick Noah, if you even know who that is. You might know his son. It's Joachim Noah, who plays basketball now. So what I'm going to do with this racket is string it up at 60 pounds with some synthetic gut yellow just like I would have done back in 1990. So I'm gonna get on the stringing machine and start the process. All right guys, so basic yellow 
synthetic gut 16 gauge at 60 pounds is what I used to do it at. I know that some of my buddies used to do 65 pounds. Uh, the reason why we did it that tight back then was because everybody else did it that tight. Nah, just kidding. This racket is actually stiff. And because it's so stiff, we had to neutralize it with the tighter strings. So 60, 65, very, very common. Um, this is actually the original, at least in my memory, the original 100 square inch frame before Babolat took the 100, before Babolat took the 100 and made it their own thing with the pure drive. All right, so I'm gonna continue stringing this racket and uh, I'll get back to you after I'm done. All right, 60 pounds. Sin gut 16. Yellow, I guess green. Maybe it was more yellow when I, when I was doing this in the 80s or the early 90s. This kind of looks greenish. This is a different one though. This is Dunlop um, S gut 16. Now, let's, let's see why I like this. I never added weight to this back in the day. No lead, no nothing. Um, I, I did add an overgrip just because this is leather and it was tough to, you know, keep a grasp of it. Five eighths. Five eighths was my grip size, even though I bought halves. Now let's, let's weigh and balance it and see why I like it in stock form. All right. Let's, I got this scale out. Three sixty one. Okay. Twelve point seven ounces. So we're in Fed range right here. So Fed strung weighs about this. What's the balance? Whoa. Three, two, it's like three, two, one here. 321 millimeters. All right, let's check the swing weight. All right, so let's check the swing weight. Three forty three. Let's go analyze. All right, guys, let's take a look at the vitals of the Yamaha Secret Four. Strong weight, twelve point seven ounces, three hundred sixty one grams. Balance point at three twenty one. Swing weight. This is probably why I love it so much. Three forty two. Here's the thing, though. 79 on the RA, 79 to 80 to be exact. So it's a very stiff frame. So if you think about like a blade or a pro staff, right? Those are in the 60s, right? This is close to 80. It's a firm frame, doesn't give much. Beam 25, straight beam. So straight, thick 25 in the beam. If you think about a blade, it's about 21. So you have four more millimeters in the thickness. So thicker, firmer. Okay. And that's the material here. It's, what do they call this again? There, there was a name for it that they used to call it. It's like high modulus graphite, which is what a lot of it is still uh, made of today. Uh, high modulus, there it is. Now, the, the one thing though about this racket was it was smooth. It cut through the air 
smoothly. You were able to take the racket back and it went right through the plane, the hitting zone, quickly and smoothly. And once it hit the ball, ball took off. And it was both sides too. Like forehand, easy, got into the plane, got in the cue, got in the plane, right through. Backhand, same thing. Easy to pull back, easy to let it rip. So I was like, man, I don't know. The only problem was I was just breaking them. <laughs> that was the only problem. I would have still been playing with it today probably if they still made it, if Yamaha was still in the racket company. But let's see um, let's see who is out there, which coach is out there, uh, and have them test it out with me. Uh, see you on the court. Yamaha Secret 04 from back in my day. I'm thinking 1990. I was born young. Thank you. <laughs> Just to make you feel better. Yes, thank you. Here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't know Yamaha made rackets. <laughs> Still hung on to it. Uh, <laughs> um, I didn't know Yamaha made rackets. I only know them as like pretty much technology like automobiles did they make automobiles too Yamaha? Computers, yeah so close enough Piano. pianos yeah they did a lot of tech stuff but i never known like known them as a racket company um but overall they did a great job this is surprisingly very it, very good <laughs> sorry i had to finish my train of thought but um it's weighted all the way through the head that's really surprising to me most rackets nowadays only go certain customizations they can like go half to the throat or barely halfway to the head of the racket but this one actually reminds me of a pro kind of blade if if that rings a bell to you guys but um no overall a really fun racket to use it's definitely heavy which i was really shocked about but weight transfer almost unreal Super smooth. Super smooth, like butter. Okay, so let me tell you a little bit about this racket. Yes, go for it. Without the overgrip. Yes. 12.7 um, ounces strings in. That's pretty heavy. That's fed. That's, re that's like really heavy. Fed weight right that's there. Fed weight. Um, <clears throat> beam is 25. That's a big, that's why you got a lot of pop. <laughs> it's good. Your blade is 21. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's four inches, man. That's a lot. Guess what the head size is on this. I'm going to say, if that thick of a beam, I'm going to say like 90, I don't know, like 95. 100. Really? The original 100. 100. The original 100. It Yamaha like did it, it first. Yep. Oh, but look crazy. at the shape. Look at the shape. Yeah, but that's a thick beam, dude. That's why, oh, RA, <laughs> how, how stiff do you think this is? Pretty darn stiff. Or 79.80. Really? Yeah. That's stiff. That's really stiff. Yeah, yours is 62. Yeah, I don't, yeah. <laughs> that has some flex. This one has no flex. I know that. So, back in the wide body era, yeah. this was one of the most powerful rackets out. I can see that. I just, I launched a few of those. I didn't expect it to be launched. Yeah, but it was easy, though. Easy power. It was easy, power. yeah. All you do is just tap it and it'll fly. So, back in my day, we would all string these up. Because synthetic gut was all kind of there was, except yeah. for gut yeah, um, or pro blend. But we strung it at 60 to 65 pounds. You know what I used to do it on my racket was when I played with the Babolat um, Aero Pro? What did you do? 64 pounds. 64. On full poly. See? So <laughs> so thicker racket on the Aero 2, tighter to keep the ball in. Yes. Right? But we did that back in the 80s and the 90s. But that was the trend. You know, everybody yeah. strung it tight. But then they came out with these wide bodies that were super stiff and powerful. We neutralized it with the tighter strings. 
That makes sense, though. So. That does make sense. I mean, that's what I did with my bob a lot, so I wouldn't be surprised. So I strung this yesterday at 60, and it feels, maybe it's because of the stiffness of the yeah. racket, this feels looser. <laughs> yeah, it does feel really loose. I was like blasting a few of these. I was like, oh boy, this is kind of loose. But it felt really good. So Coach Koo, you mm -hmm. don't know this because you're too young. I so was a boy yet. Yeah, <laughs> secret, secret four was the stiffest one. Mm -hmm. The lower this number, like the four, the yeah. more powerful it was. So that so, wasn't even that. Uh, so this so is the most controlled one. No, no, no. This was oh. actually the stiffest one. Um, so it was four, six, and ten when I was around uh -huh. with this racket. Yeah. So there wasn't anything stiffer than a four. Oh, wow. So O four, O six, and a secret 10. The 10 was the most flexible. Mm. 100 square inches on all of them. This is the firmest one, stiffest one. Yeah, I can, I can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> so I smashed about a lot of these because wow. they're so easy to break. Oh, really? Yeah, you hit, I hit 12 o'clock dead on on an overhead Broke. or forehand, it breaks right here. Oh, wow. They're real brittle. Oh, wow. Real brittle. That's crazy. Yeah, the, the rumor is there's so much graphite in here, there wasn't enough compound to hold it together. So if you framed it too many times, it would just... No, Harry, he doesn't hit the ball very clean. Snap. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, still don't. <laughs> I know you don't. <laughs> but yeah, super fun racket. Glad I had it. Thank you to my man Todd for hooking that up. Um, uh, Todd, we'll make sure Harry doesn't play any more of this racket at this point. Um, you might, you might break it. So the thing that I did notice though uh, was when the leather. I was trying to play with the leather grip, the original grip. I couldn't grasp it. I couldn't get a hold of it. I couldn't get around on it because it it, it just kept slipping in my hands. So I had to throw an overgrip on it. But I, I didn't even try because he's a wuss. Five eighths. That's huge. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, mean, I was trying not to add more group <clears throat> to it. But you just did. Yeah, but I had to. Yeah, that's your fault. Yep. On me. On me. All right, Coach Goo, thank you for joining me. Where can we find you? You can find me at agu.tennis. I'll also be posting content there as well. All right, guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. So what is this thing? I don't know. It says satisfying pop, so it's kind of interesting. Harry, are you ready? I'll be right there. We we really wanted to go hit before we had to Ian, leave town. Ian, Ian, I don't mean oh, to be yeah, a little. Hey, cool. Give me a second. Give me a second. We gotta. Get well, a Harry said, uh, like I I really actually wanted to go hit. Harry, I'm coming. Can you hurry it up? I don't I don't mean to be rude, but we we have an Uber coming. Okay, it's a little tight. It's a little tight. I'll be right there. We're gonna miss our flight. It's yeah. not worth it for. Harry, come on. Kind of last chance, man. We gotta go. All right, all right. Almost there. Almost yeah. there. Harry, it's been great working with you. We got to take off. Good luck, man. Oh, Thanks, oh, Harry. oh, oh. Good luck. Guys, guys, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Guys, I'm ready. Guys, guys, I'm stuck. Ian, Joel, anybody? Guys, I'm stuck. Leonard, are you here?